Testing. Testing, 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 testing. Unique New York. <sighs> Hello, buenos dias, guten tag, ni hao, and bonjour to my worldwide fans. You've got no friends. I'm Jack Redley, 24 year old graphic designer from England. This channel is all about graphic design orientated books, and I'm going to present to you my three biggest takeaways from a different book every single week. Why? One, I want to motivate you to graphic design. Two, I want to inform you about what books you should get your hands on. And then three, I want to teach you something about graphic design you didn't already know. This week, I want to present to you The Laws of Simplicity by John Maeder. This book is really, really interesting from the point of view of simplifying your life. Now in this time of coronavirus where there's a lot of stress, a lot of uncertainty, um, people have kind of gone back to basics a bit. And people are going for dog walks, spending time with their family, kind of reflecting a lot on what they're doing in their present day to day, um, maybe more than they were with like frantic, busy work life. And I actually think this book is quite interesting to read in this period particularly because you're trying to understand um, how to simplify your life and the fundamentals of those things translate to graphic design really well too. John Maeder, he's a master of simplicity and this book has 10 different laws on uh, simplicity and, and basically how to simplify your life, um, but also uh, design technology and business. What I'm gonna do in this video though, in um, respect to John Maeder, is just focus on one law called reduce. And I wanna just go through that in detail in this video. So, as you know, I'm gonna present three different points in three minutes. Let's go. <laughs> Takeaway number one from this book is shrinking. So John Mader explains that by shrinking a product, for example, to a smaller size, it makes it simpler and as a result, more satisfying for the customer. If a large product is shrunk down, but has the same functionality as a larger product, then it's more appealing to the customer. In addition, as the product is smaller, it seems more fragile. And as a result, the design can be made to look more delicate and elegant than a larger product, which uh, might be quite clumpy and clumsy. So design plays a huge part in this by making things look smaller than they are. You just need to look at the iPod to see that the mirrored back makes the iPod look um, a lot smaller than it actually is because it reflects the surface that it's on. So to the owner, it looks thinner and more delicate as a result of it being simplified in its design. Takeaway number two from this book is hide. So by hiding complexity, it actually makes the product a lot simpler. So for example, if we take a remote and look at how many buttons a remote has, when there's loads and loads of buttons, it's a lot harder to use because it's very complex. So if you reduce the number of buttons there are, then it means that it's a lot easier for the consumer to understand how to use it. There has to be a balance though between simplicity by removing all these buttons and then by allowing the product to have the complexity that it needs in order to function well. If we go back to the example of a remote, if you look at the Apple's scroll wheel on an iPod, then what's really ingenious about this is it's making a complex thing very, very simple. Design plays a huge part in this. Just think about the Apple scroll wheel and then the single button in the middle, which has a variety of functions. You can um, pause, you can play, you can uh, rewind, all of this stuff within those two buttons, the, fun the central button and then the scroll wheel itself. This means that you're taking a very, very complex set of functions and through design, making a very, very simple, um, consumer-friendly uh, set of controls that is, are easy to understand and use. It's also just so much more elegant as well because all of those commands that you need for an iPod are just distilled down into one ingenious bit of design. Takeaway number three from this book is embody. So, after shrinking and hiding the complexity of these products, it is crucial that the customer still values the product in the same way that it would of its larger counterpart. So this all comes down to customer perception 
and this can be actual or perceived value. So that means improving the quality of the materials used to make the product would be an actual um, thing that improves the value of the product or a perceived value which might be a marketing campaign. So the perception of quality is crucial. So for example, if it's perceived quality, then um, a marketing campaign would improve the uh, perception of the value of that product. For example, Nike might get Serena Williams, Roger Federer, Cristiano Ronaldo to wear their products to imbue this sense or embody this sense of quality when they're not actually improving the quality of the materials used um, over Adidas and other sportswear brands. So what they're doing is they're just making sure that we think that the quality of the products is high because these top athletes wear these products and we wanna be like these top athletes. However, by improving the quality of the actual materials used, you're gonna raise the perceived value of that product in the eyes of the customer. So for example, there's a Danish electronics brand called Bang & Olufsen, I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong, but they do uh, premium electronics. And to raise the perceived value of their products, they've got premium materials, which naturally means that they can charge more for the product, but they also weigh the remote. So the remote is actually heavier than it needs to be because it has this elegant sleek design and it's very small. So it's not only uh, shrinking the uh, product itself, but also hiding the complexity of it, but they weigh it down in the, in the customer's hand so that it feels like quality. It, it's weighted and that has a perceived notion of quality. So when those two things combine, that's when it's highly effective. In conclusion then, John Maida says, lessen what you can and conceal everything else without losing the sense of inherent value. That's such a powerful phrase. There's not one word in there that doesn't need to be there. Basically distilling down and reducing um, complexity makes life simpler. And that's not just for product design, but I think, like he says in his introduction, I, I think these laws that um, he explains in this book can be applied to every aspect of life without trying to sound so, like really intense. So this book blew my mind. All 10 laws are well worth reading, but I've only introduced you the, the key ideas from uh, law number one, which is the first chapter of the book. I would a million percent recommend you getting this book. It takes like two hours to read. Okay, maybe a bit longer. It takes not long to read and it's so, so packed with wisdom and value and you're gonna feel like Yoda after you've read it. If you think that this video did have value, then comment below, like, subscribe. There's so much more that I'm gonna be doing in terms of hopefully providing graphic design knowledge to you guys. I'm trying to become a better graphic designer and, and that's why I'm doing this, kind of sharing what I learn as I go. So hopefully this provides some value to somebody. Um, down in the comment section of this YouTube channel, I'm going to put links to the book, I'm going to put links to his website, John Maida's website, and anything else that I think is useful. So check down there if you want any extra information on any of that. I'll see you next week. In conclusion then, John Maida says, 